Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, I'm going to start a new playlist on recommendation system. When I started learning recommendation system, I was very, very much curious to know different techniques of creating recommendation system by seeing various examples of Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, of different shopping sites, online shopping sites like Amazon, Flipkart, I always had, I always wanted to learn what are the different kind of recommendation system that, that can be created. So uh, I started exploring a lot of it and this particular playlist will be focused on creating all the different kinds of recommendation system. Initially, we'll just start with some basic recommendation system and as we go ahead with the upcoming videos, I'll be explaining you all the different examples of collaborative uh, recommendation system, content-based recommendation, uh, recommendation system. Uh, I even will be explaining you a recommendation system based on different algorithms, machine learning algorithms like KNN classifiers, uh, sorry, K, K nearest neighbors, and all those different kind of uh, algorithms. But this all will be explained in this particular playlist. And this playlist, I'll try to upload daily at least one video on different different types. Just to begin with, let us just see a basic recommendation system, how we can basically create it. And this particular recommendation system is based on average weighted values. Now, uh, average weighted values, I'll be explaining you what exactly it is. The data set that I'm basically considering is basically a movie data set. And this particular movie data set I've downloaded from this Kaggle. Uh, it is available freely. What you can do is that you can just copy this particular data set. I'll just provide you the link over here. Okay. And I'll be uploading this whole uh, Jupyter Notebook file uh, in my GitHub so that you can download and you can basically try it by your own. So initially to begin with, I'm going to install pandas and numpy. And then I have, after downloading the data set from this Kaggle link, I basically have two files. One is pmdb underscore 5000 underscore credits dot CSV. And then I also have tmdb underscore 5000 underscore movies dot CSV. So this basically has information about 5000 different movies and there are de various different kind of, uh, you know, uh, values or features present in this particular data set. Like uh, we'll just see the data set, what all it is present. So after reading a data set of credits, okay, so this is the variable that I've created credits. And if I go and see the head of credits, you can see that I'm having information like movie ID, title, cast. So this cast is basically in some dictionary format, right? Uh, so different, different cast IDs present characters, names and all. Similarly, I also have crew information in this particular data set. I like this particular data set because there is a lot uh, of information in this particular data set when compared to the movie lens data set that we usually use for recommendation system. The next thing is that I'm going to also see the head of this movie underscore data frame. So for that, I'll just go down. If I do movies underscore DF dot head, you see that I'm having some information like budget, uh, generates home page. So this is basically the URL of the movie itself. Uh, you can go and have a look onto this. Uh, there is a unique ID for this particular movies, keywords, original language, original title, Overview, overview are some features like uh, a brief summary of the movie. So you can see overview, popularity, this will be having some values between zero to 200. There is also something like production and so companies, uh, which are companies basically have, uh, you know, uh, done the production work. Well, in which country this uh, production has basically happened, release date, revenue, how much revenue this particular movie has made, runtime, how many minutes this particular movie is, spoken language and all. So these are some of the information uh, still if you uh, you know uh, if, if if you're interested to just go through it just scroll it towards the right you have uh, also information like status tagline vote average now this is uh, important because we are just going to consider this vote underscore average for using the average weighted recommendation it will be just a very simple recommendation engine since this is my first uh, video on you know, recommendation. I've already created some videos on recommendation that also I'm going to put it in the playlist, but just uh, take this particular uh, feature like vote, vote, vote underscore average and vote underscore count. Now, <clears throat> this is my movies dot head. What I'm going to do is that first of all, I will try to uh, see uh, what is the shape of this particular credit data set and my movies uh, data set. So here you can see that my movies, uh, this should be movies underscore df. Uh, is underscore df okay 
movies data frame dot shape so it uh, yeah so movies underscore df so here you can see that i'm basically having four features in the credit column uh, sorry credit data set and 4803 records similarly in this in movies data frame i have basically 20 um features and 4803 records now the first thing that i want to do is that i'll combine this credit and this movies data set there's a reason why i'm doing that i'll just let you know in a while let me just combine it and to combine it the first of all the thing that i'll be requiring that with respect to which column i will try to combine both of this data set okay so if i just uh, scroll down scroll uh, to the first uh, five features you can see that there is an id column and I just found out from this data set, this ID column is similar to the movie underscore ID. So what I can do is that I can combine these two, uh, you know, uh, data frames, uh, considering this particular ID. Okay. First of first, first of all, what I'll do, I'll just rename this movie underscore ID with ID. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here, I'll just uh, try to, uh, so here I've just taken it as uh, credits dot rename. And here I'm basically used my, I basically renamed my movie underscore ID to ID. The reason, uh, why I'm renaming it is that because I need to merge that particular data frames, right? With my movies underscore DS. So for that, what I'm doing is that first of all, I'm renaming it. So once it becomes ID in that credit uh, data frame, then I basically use movies underscore DF, which is my data frame of the movies dot merge with credits underscore column underscore rename. Now I've all saved after renaming it into a new variable called as credit underscore columns underscore rename. So I'm merging this movies underscore DF with credits underscore column underscore rename and with on what basis I'm actually merging it on this particular specific ID, which is uh, my feature, right? ID is basically my feature. So I'm merging that. And once I merge it, you can see the head part of here that I'll just have one ID column based on that. You'll have you'll, you know, the whole features will get merged. And once you can see that, you can see all the features are merged over in the last you can basically have some more informations like vote average, vote count, title, cast. So all the columns will get basically combined. Now there is a reason why I'm doing it. I'll just let you know in a while. The next thing is that uh, I just observed in this particular data set, uh, some of the features like home page, you know, if I just go over here and see what is a home page, home page is basically a URL. I don't require this because there's some additional information that is basically given. So I just observed some of the, uh, you know, features like home page, title underscore X, title underscore Y, status, production underscore countries, which were not that important. So I have basically dropped all these particular columns. Okay. And if you just go and see this, uh, this does not make any uh, importance uh, with respect to our recommendation. So I've just dropped it because there's so many columns over there. I want to reduce some of the columns, which is not required. So after removing it, I've created a variable movies underscore clean underscore data frame. That is my DF. And now you can see that my data set is basically happen, having only important features, uh, which I'll basically be using for my recommendation purpose. Then I'm also going to do uh, movies underscore clean underscore df dot info. And here you can basically see that it is all non uh, null object. That basically means it will not have any NAND values, but anyhow, uh, first always to begin with, go and check whether there is any NAND values or not. I verified it. There were no NAND values. So I'm just going to continue. But if there, uh, if there is any blank values, I'll try to fix it. I'll just show you. The today's technique that I'm going to basically use is basically called as weighted average for each movie average rating. Now see guys, uh, there is a feature called as average rating. Let me just show it to you. Okay, uh, okay this is the runtime. There's so many features, so it is becoming very difficult in this particular screen size, you know, to just see uh voting average so here i have one voting average and here i have one vote count okay so i'm basically going to consider the voting average uh based on that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to apply this weighted average formula now this is the most important thing to understand uh this particular formula is basically uh taken from this particular source uh you know this particular formula the formula basically says that uh w is equal to which is my weighted rating uh, R multiplied by V plus C multiplied by M divided by V plus M. This is a simple formula of calculating the weighted average. Here R basically means the average for the movie as a number from 0 to 10. Uh, if you just go and see the ratings right over here, voting average, I think uh, this should be ratings also. Just let me have a look. Mm. 
Okay, uh, let me just see the column names first of all. I'll just go up, just give me a second. I have, okay, I'm basically, uh, the average rating is basically the voting average that I've basically considered in this particular example, okay? So it should be the voting average. So what I'm doing is that I'm just using a simple formula saying that average for the movie as a number from zero to 10, this V, small V basically indicates number of votes for the movie, how many number of votes has been done for that particular movie. Votes basically means, uh, we are just, uh, you know, how many people have given some ratings for that particular movie. And uh, M, small M basically indicates that minimum votes required to be listed in the top 250. Currently it is 3000. Now see, uh, we have many movies over here. We have more than 3000 movies. Or uh, there may be situation that, uh, one person may have just given the, have seen that particular movie if it is not that famous. And he may also have given just one reviews. Okay. But if I just try to directly see the average rating of that movie, then it, uh, suppose if he's given five for that movie, only one person has seen it. That does not mean that that movie may be wonderful, right? It may be great because only one person has uh, seen that particular movie. So, uh, what we do is that we create an M variable, which says that minimum votes required to be listed in top 250. So currently, if I consider that there are 3000 movies, at least 250 voting, 250 rating should be given. Then only I'm going to consider those movies, right? So similarly, my C variable may basically indicates the mean vote across the whole report. Okay. Now, what I'll do is that I'll create all these variables. First of all, I'll just go ahead and create V. V basically says number of votes for the movie, right? So I'll just go and use vote count. This particular feature will basically give me the vote count. Um, then I'll go and calculate R, capital R, average for the movie as number from 0 to 10. For this, I'm just going to take the voting average, which is my voting average altogether. Uh, these are the features that are basically used. Then let us go to the C. This is nothing but the mean vote for the whole report. So I can consider movies underscore clean underscore DF. I'll take the voting average and I'll just do the mean. That way I'm, I'll be getting the mean across the whole report, the mean of the movies mean vote of the movies across the whole report. And then after that, I have small m, which is says that minimum votes required to be listed in top 250. Here, if I want some top 250 here, I'm not just going to consider top 50, top 250. I'll just consider more movies. And over here, I'm going to use a quantile process, which is called a 70 percentile. I'll say that only those movies that are more than 70 percentile, right? That value, that count, I'm going to just take it out, okay? So till 70th percentile, I mean, uh, it should have more than 70 percentile votes. Then only I'm going to consider that. That will help us to reduce some of the rows and that will help us to, you know, fix uh, this C, uh, not C, uh, sorry, M problem. Okay. How many minimum number of votes that will also give us an idea that many people have given some votes uh, for this particular movie. So it will help us also to, uh, you know, uh, recommend uh, based on this weighted average properly. Now based on this formula, I'm just going to apply this particular formula and I'm going to find out the weights. So here is my weights. I'm just going to apply this particular formula. So it will become R multiplied by V plus C multiplied by M divided by V plus M. So here it is. I'm creating a new column called as weighted average. So here is my weighted average. Uh, now let us go ahead and see our weighted average. So you, here is my weighted average. Here you can see that based on my vote underscore average, vote underscore count, when I have actually performed a weighted average. So here is my column that is got created. Okay. And it is based on this vote average and the formula that we try to use. So this is the most basic recommendation engine. I initially came through and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to share your, uh, share you this particular knowledge. But as we go ahead with this particular playlist, we'll be developing some complex uh, recommendation system, which is basically used in Netflix and, uh, many others, uh, uh, you know, recommendation engine itself. So here it is. Uh, after this, what I'm going to do, I have calculated my weighted average. Now this weighted average specifies a lot of information. Let us see what happens in the next. After this, what I'm doing is that this weighted average column that I've got in my movie underscore clean underscore data set, I'm going to sort it. I'm going to sort it. You know, I'm, I'm sorting it with respect to ascending is equal to false. That basically means that it is going to give me based on the weighting average from bigger to smaller numbers. Okay. And once I take this, I'm going to display some of the information that I want from the uh, data set, like original title, vote underscore count, vote underscore average, weighted underscore average, and popularity. So when I see the top 20 records, here it is. 
this is the column that i had got now based on the you know average this vote count and vote underscore average along with the moving uh, average weighted average so along with this particular uh, terminology that we are using weighted average we have got our weighted average from a descending order okay now this basically recommends that you know uh, suppose you have seen the shar shar shawshank redemptions right and uh, the average weighted average was 8.34 and here we are not specifically con uh, you know considering collaborative filtering here we are just considering content based filtering now when based on this particular voting average and voting count okay what i am going to do is that i am going to basically trigger uh, this also can be considered as collaborative because this voting count and voting average is basically given by the user behaviors right so the next movie that can be recommended is basically godfather or fight club because they are having the weighted average after this one okay i mean lesser than 8.3 at least so this was the information about uh, you know uh, the weighted average and similarly you can plot it you can plot this particular same uh, you know same weighted average based on ascending is equal to false you'll be seeing that you'll be having best movies by average goes here is a movie title and weighted average score you can see that the Shaw shawshank redemption had the highest average and similarly uh, you will be seeing that all the movies will be decreasing as you go down okay so this is just the top 5 records and this is uh, for displaying over here i'm basically using seaborn okay and similarly for the and uh, after this okay this is one way i've basically taken a voting count and voting average i can also consider popularity you know i can also consider popularity now for popularity based on popularity dot head what i can do is i'm just going to check what is popularity dot head and when i try to you know uh, plot it with respect to popularity there is also some information now see this guys uh, here i have actually considered voting count and voting average and i have basically applied this weighted average formula and i was able to get a very good results right uh um, here i was able to see that which is uh, having the best average weighting and this is based on the number of people voting it right now can i use popularity along with voting count and voting average and i can also perform a recommendation engine right so why why we should use popularity see because they are many popular movies where many people have not been seen right many people have not been given the votings right so for those also we should not skip the popular movies so what we'll do is that we'll take this popularity um and we'll try to just plot it see here i'm basically taking my popularity so i'll just go down just download this particular code from the github guys you'll uh, get to know a lot of things okay so based on popularity you can see that uh first of all based on average uh, uh, votes you can see that the shawshank redemption was the best movie right but based on popularity if you see minions is the best movie over here okay and how i'm plotting it i'm basically using seaborn first of all i'm sorting the values based on popularity and i'm plotting it using seaborn okay so when i see over here minions is the best popular vote uh, popular movies by vote uh, sorry by votes itself and interstellar than deadpool guardian of galaxy and this does not mean that okay, can i use this particular information along with my voting average to recommend something and the answer is yes so for this what i'll do is that i will give 50% of uh, you know 50% of uh, what to say for this kind of stuff so for for the popularity i'll give 50% importance and another 50% importance i'll just give it to my weighted average okay for my weighted average so for that what i'll do is that i'll just use a simple formula i'll just use a sim simple formula so i'll just say that recommendation based on scaled weighted average and popularity score the priority is given 50% to both that basically means 50% importance is given to popularity and 50% importance is given to weighted average and this can be changed you can take 75 25 and this is just a basic uh, recommendation engine that i'm creating so it will make sense for you as we go ahead in the upcoming classes now first of all before i apply uh, the scaled weight average first of all i'll just do min max scalar and i'll transform my weighted average and popularity okay uh, i'll i'll just transform this particular uh, values i'll scale down these values between 0 to 1 why i'm doing it because if i just go up uh if you see the popularity and weighting average right these two are having different different magnitude okay i don't i don't know about the units the units may be between 1 to 10 for weighted average for popularity it may be 1 to 200 so that is the reason i'll just scale down this particular value and then i'll try to apply importance 40% importance to popularity 
50% importance to the weighted average. So for that, what I'm doing is that I'll just apply min-max scalar. I hope everybody knows how you have to apply min-max scalar. So I'm doing fit transform on weighted underscore average and popularity. And finally, this is my normalized DF where I'm combining my scaled data frame along with the weighted average and popularity. And finally, after scaling it, you'll see these are the values. The top five records are this. Now, what I will do is that I will uh, take this data set. I will convert this into a new data frame. Suppose like this, I'll, I'll just create this as a new uh, two features and I'll, uh, I'll insert it in our movie clean data set. So that is what I'm doing over here. I've created two features, normalized weight average and normalized popularity. And I have basically appended movie underscore normalized underscore DX. Now, once I do this, once I do this, what I have to do is that next step, as I told you, I'll just provide some importance. Now see, everybody focus in through this. I'll declare, I'll create a new feature called as score. And in this particular score, I will say that movies underscore clean underscore DF normalized weight underscore average I'll multiply by 0.5. Now see, I'm multiplying, I'm giving 50% importance to weight average. So I basically say multiply by 0.5. Similarly, I have to give 0.5, uh, that is 50% importance to my normalized, uh, normalized uh, popularity. So I'm also multiplying this particular value. Once I do this, once I do this, I will be having a square score value. And when I convert this into a data frame, my score will look something like this. Now you see, now I've basically taken weighted average. I've also taken popularity into consideration and I'm based on that. I've predicted a square. I have made a score and this score I'm giving 50% importance to the weighted average and 50% importance to the popularity. So here by this, you see that interstellar is basically uh, given the highest importance of 86% and minions than guardian of the galaxy. And it will basically be in the decreasing order. If you see now, if you want to get the recommendation, so first of all, based on the score, inter Interstellar will be given the recommendation. The Minions will be given the recommendation. Guardian of the Galaxy will be given the recommendation. And that is how it is basically done, guys. Uh, this was two basic examples of this. And again, uh, if I try to plot this same thing, okay, after I do this, you can see we have sorted the score. And based on the score, if I'm plotting it, you can see the most popular movie is Interstellar. Okay. Uh, in my next video, I'll be discussing about content-based recommendation system uh, by using some uh, some more uh, you know important algorithms that are present in machine learning. But I hope you understood this basic concepts of creating uh, the recommendation system. And I think uh, when when we go back in back in 1990s or 2000 or 2010, right? At that time, you'll be seeing not in 2010, but at least in 2000s. This kind of recommendation system was basically used and it is basically called as weighted average for uh, each movie average ratings along with pop popularity. Okay? So first of all, I use my weighted average and then I try to provide importance based on multiple columns. If I have popularity, I try to provide more importance. Uh, so that importance here, I've decided as 50%. Uh, if you want to try it by different way, you can basically also give your, your own, uh, you know, it may be, 25% uh, importance to one column, 75 to other column. It depends on your side. Okay. Now, this was all about this particular video, guys. I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have not already done, please share with all your friends and make sure you watch also my deep learning playlist, which I have also started. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you one and all. God bless you all.